Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be making a spike wall that gets triggered whenever a player touches the part in front of it. So what I'm going to do first is to show you how it looks, and then I'll try to run through it. Okay, so whenever a player goes up to this red part here, which you can obviously make invisible if you want to, so when they touch that part, it's going to trigger the spiked wall. Okay, and this time I'm going to run through it so you can see what happens. So if a player gets trapped inside this wall, they die. Alright, so let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Alright, so before we get started with the scripting, I'm going to explain the setup for this project. So the first thing you're going to need is a part in front of the spiked wall to serve as the trigger. So whenever the player steps in this part, it's going to make the walls close in. In the Explorer menu over here, I renamed that one to Trigger. You're also going to need two different walls. So for the first one, I called that wall one, and then the other one is wall two. And then these two parts in the middle, which are semi-transparent, I use those as the stopping point for the two walls. So this wall over here is going to go all the way until it reaches this part right here. And then the other wall is going to go all the way until it reaches the other part right here. Okay, so the reason I did that is so that we don't have to worry about the numbers. We can just say, take the left wall and go to the first stopping position and then take the right wall and go to the other stopping position. If you're going to use this in your game, you're more than welcome to make these parts invisible, along with the trigger part right here. Okay, as far as making the walls go, I just kept it nice and simple. So I just took a part and then scaled it to whatever size I want to. And then for the spikes, I just used a wedge part. So I just scaled it a little bit and then rotated it. And then once you have one wedge part that looks the way you want to, you can just use Control D to duplicate the part, and then move it to the new location. Once you're done with one line, then what you can do is select the first part, hold the Control key, and then press the other ones. And then once you have the whole line selected, you can use Control D again to copy the whole line. Okay, so once you have all your spikes, then what you're going to do is select the wall and all the spike parts. And then you're going to go under the Model tab and then press Union. And what that's going to do, it's going to take everything and group it into one Union part. Alright, so once you have the first wall done, then to make the other one, it's really simple. You can just use Control D to make a copy of it. And then you can just rotate it to face the other direction. Alright, so I'm sure you guys can probably make a wall that looks much better than mine. But once you finish making the walls, then what we're going to do is we're going to click on our trigger part, and then we're going to add a script to it. Okay, so on the script, we're going to start with some different variables. First, we're going to say local trigger is going to be equal to script.parent. Then we're going to say local wall underscore one, and this is going to be equal to game.workspace.wall1. So this is the left wall. And then after that, we're going to make a variable for the left stopping point, which is going to be the first invisible part right here. So we'll say local stop underscore one. And this is going to be equal to game dot workspace dot wall one underscore stop. And then from there, we're going to get the position of this part by saying dot and position. Okay, next, we're going to do the same thing for wall two. So we'll say local wall2 is going to be equal to game.workspace.wall2. And then we'll make one for the second stopping point by saying local stop underscore 2 is going to be equal to game.workspace.wall2 underscore stop. Then we're going to make a variable that's going to keep track of when our trap is running. So we'll say local trap underscore activated and this is going to be equal to false in the beginning the next two variables are going to store the orientation of the wall so that we can turn them around so we'll say local wall one underscore and then o r n which will do short for orientation is going to be equal to wall underscore one dot orientation and then we'll say local 
wall2 underscore ORN, and it's going to be equal to wall underscore two dot orientation. Next, what we're going to do is make a function that will run whenever our trigger part gets touched. So we'll say local function. The name of our function can be something like activate. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. And this is going to be the other object that touches our red part. So whatever else touches this part right here. What we're going to do first is we're going to say local humanoid is going to be equal to other part dot parent colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to say humanoid. Then we're going to say if humanoid. So if a humanoid object touches the red part, and we also want to check to make sure the trap is not already moving, which we can do by saying and not trap activated. So if those two conditions are met, then what we're going to do first is say trap underscore activated is equal to true. So that'll mean the trap is running. And then the first thing we're going to do is just flip the walls around. So to do that, we're going to say wall underscore one dot orientation. And since the walls are opposite to each other, to turn them around, what we can do is for wall one, we can set the orientation equal to wall two's orientation. So we'll say equal to wall two underscore and then ORN. And then we'll do the same for the other wall. So we'll say wall underscore two dot orientation is going to be equal to the first wall's orientation. So we'll say wall one underscore and then ORN. And finally, we're going to connect this function to a touch event. So we'll say trigger dot touched colon connect. And then we're going to connect this with activate. All right, so let's go ahead and try it out and make sure this part is working. OK, so now if we go up to the red part and touch it, and we can see once we touch the part that our walls flip around. So the next thing we're going to work on is making the walls move together. To move the walls together, we're going to be using a tween, which will allow for smooth motion. We're going to start that off by saying local tween service. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put tween service. Next, we're going to define a variable that we're going to use later on. We're going to say local wall underscore speed. And this is going to be equal to 3. So what this number here is going to be, it's going to be the amount of time that it takes this wall right here to move to this first position right here. So it's going to take 3 seconds for this wall to go to this one. OK, so after that, we need to define some information for our tween. So we'll say local tween info. And this is going to be equal to tween info dot new. We're going to put parentheses and then press enter a few times. The first part of this is going to be the time it takes to complete the tween. And we define that as wall speed. So we'll put wall underscore speed. And then we're going to put a comma. And then just as a note, what I'm going to do is put time. So that way, when you're going back to look at this, you know that the first part refers to the time. The next part, we're going to say enum dot easing style. And then from there, there's a couple different easing styles. The one I'm going to choose is linear. I'm going to put a comma. And then for this one, we'll just say easing style. And what I'm going to do in the description of this video is give you links to each of these different properties so that you can look at them and see what the different options are. OK, so next we're going to say enum dot easing direction. And then the easing direction that I'm going to choose is out. Next is going to be the number of times it repeats. So that's going to be 0. So the next part is going to be whether or not the tween reverses. So in our case, we do want it to reverse. So we're going to say true. And then the last part is going to be the delay time. So in our case, we're going to say 0. OK, so next we're going to go back to our function down here and add some more lines of code. So after we flip around the walls, we want them to move. So to make them move by using the tween service, what we're going to do is say tween service 
colon create. And then inside the parentheses here will be the part that we're going to move. So it's going to be wall underscore one. We're going to give it our tween info. And make sure you use the one that has a lowercase t, which corresponds to this right here. After that, we're going to put curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets, we're going to put position, which is the property we're going to be changing. And then we're going to say that's equal to, and then the position that we want to move it to is going to be this wall right here. So we want to take wall one and move it to this position right here. And we define that position as stop underscore one. So we're going to set this equal to stop underscore one. Okay, and then to play this tween, we're going to say colon and play. So what we can do next is just copy this line. And then to make wall two move, we're just going to change this part right here. We'll change it from one to two. And then we're going to be moving it to stop underscore two. So after it completes the tween, we want to flip the walls back the other direction. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the tween to complete. For the amount of time, it's going to be equal to wall underscore speed. And since we're having it reverse two, it's going to be two times as long. So we can say times and two. So the reason we have to do times two is because it's going to take three seconds to go to the middle and then three seconds to go back to the outside. OK, so after that wait time, we're going to set the orientation back to the original. So what we're going to do is we're going to say wall one dot orientation is going to be equal to the original orientation. And then we're going to do the same for wall two. So we'll say wall underscore two dot orientation is going to be equal to the original. After all that's complete, we're going to allow the trap to be reactivated by saying trap underscore activated is equal to false. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look and make sure everything's working. So what I'm going to do is go up to the red part and we'll see if the tween is working. Okay, so it looks like it works for wall one, but not for wall two. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on. And we can see if we open up the output here for this part right here, it got an instance, but it's expecting a vector three. And if we go back up to this part right here for stop underscore two, we should add dot position to this. Okay, so let's try it again and see if that fixes it. Okay, and there we go. So now we have both walls going toward the center. And you can see once they go toward the center, they reverse. And then once they get back to the outside, they flip back around. Okay, so the last part we need to work on is make it so that whenever the walls touch the player, it kills the player. We're going to do that in a separate function down here. So we'll say local function. You can call this function whatever you want to. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass other part. Just like before, we're going to start by checking for a humanoid. So we'll say local humanoid is equal to other part dot parent and then colon find first child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to be checking for a humanoid. And then we'll say if humanoid. Then we're going to set the humanoid's health equal to zero. So we'll say humanoid dot health is equal to zero. OK, and finally, we're going to connect this to some different touch events. So we'll say wall underscore one dot touched colon connect. And then we'll connect that with our function. And then we'll do the same for wall two. So we'll say wall underscore two dot touched colon connect and then our function name. All right, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure everything's working. OK, so if I go through the wall here and I get touched by one of the walls, then I die. OK, and this is what it might look like if you make everything transparent. So the part is still there on the ground. It's just invisible. So when the player walks over it, it triggers the trap and then they have to try to make it through before it closes on them. OK, so just a couple things to check if you're having trouble with this project for wall one and wall two, I would recommend that you anchor those two parts and also make sure that there's no welds on them to check for welds. You would just open up the part and check to see if there's a weld for the trigger part. It doesn't really matter. But if you see a weld in one of the wall parts, then what you need to do is just click on it and press delete. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.